Mm. Are they different? Um, uh, one of the things that uh, our viewers need to understand that all contracts are agreements, but not all agreements are contracts. Correct. Now, I'll go ahead to make the distinction. Um, when you read the law, the Uganda has a law that provides for contracts it's called the Contracts Act of 2010. Now, when you read Section 2, it makes it actually much more simplified. It goes on to tell you that um, a contract is an agreement that is enforceable by law. Now that will mean that not all agreements can be enforced under the law. Correct. But all contracts ought to be enforceable under the law. Mm -hmm. Because again, you have to understand what a contract is. Now it goes ahead to define what a contract is under section 10 of that very law. It says one, a contract, there should be an agreement, there should be offer, I must make an offer to you, mm -hmm. then you must accept that offer. There should be free consent so I shouldn't coerce you when you're making that particular contract the other thing is that you must have the capacity to contract not you don't make an, a contract with everybody it also goes on to tell you that the persons must be those of sound mind mm -hmm. um, uh, and again maybe capacity to contract one the person has to be of sound mind the person has to be over 18 years over 18 years yes if it's an entity then it must be one that is legally registered not all entities can simply make contracts and uh, there ought to be considerations I can't there ought to be a form of exchange many times recognized as a monetary exchange a, le a legal consideration so there ought to be that money that maybe has been exchanged for the sake of um, the people who have been uh, discussing mm -hmm. yeah and then also the ultimate thing is that you must have an intention to be legally bound mm -hmm. so whenever you're making a contract the mind of the law and the mind of the court in case the contract has been broken, you go to the court the court will analyze did you really intend to be legally bound or you simply intended to make your contract just you know the way you wanted it mm -hmm. now also the courts are very very you know the courts uh, presume that there is the free will of the people to the what you call the freedom of contract mm -hmm. that uh, when I make a contract with you we are free to put in agreement supposed to be done for as long as it is legal for example um, if I'm going to give you consideration, it ought to be something, it has to be something with a lawful object. Okay. We cannot make a contract to import cocaine, for example. <laughs> that would so be it has lawful. to be within the laws. Yes. It needs to be something that is legal. Yes. Then on the other side, what is an agreement? Now, um, the, the law now will tell us that an agreement, this section two, it says that it, this agreement um, should is one that informs the contract. So an agreement will be the one that will stipulate the forms of consideration and all these other is things. Is it written? Is it verbal? Um, an agreement, just like a contract, uh, may be oral, it may be written. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So also a contract can be verbal? Yes, it can be verbal. Verbal? Yes. Expound. Um, for example, now many times you go to the shop, yes. you've gone to buy a, a, a product, a commodity. Now you find commodities that are displayed on uh, the shelves and everything. And I come and I speak to you about that. Eh? Because what in, you've put up something for display, maybe like that, that iPad. Mm -hmm. Now come, I have an interest to buy the iPad. I will ask you how much is it. Now at that time, the contract is beginning to take form from a verbal stage, then we shall go ahead to now make the exchange, the monetary exchange, which will be now considered as the consideration. Mm -hmm. Now again, remember, um, you now even accepted. I, I went ahead, me as the customer, I went ahead and I accepted it. You get it? Yes. And also, ultimately, you know that you, you, when you walk into a supermarket and you go to buy a product, at least the intention, the, your intention is one that you, you are getting to a relationship mm -hmm. with the person who is selling the commodity. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, the law again will go ahead to presume that you intended, you intended. to be legally bound. And you are not coerced. You are not coerced. Okay. Um, you have mentioned that um, a contract can actually be verbal. Yes. But if there's breach mm. and you want to actually get the law to help you out, mm. do you have a standing case if you don't have your verbal contract um, mm. um, 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 given a background with a written one? Um, now, where, as a lawyer, now I could firmly advise is that it's yes. important that even when you make an oral contract, then there ought to be a written one. Because, you see, for an oral contract, still, the law can protect you. However, it now becomes very hard, especially 
when it comes to proving evidence it becomes quite challenging now that's when you'll have to call in witnesses people who are around witness maybe this contract taking place okay. um so in case uh, there is no written contract it's really 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 advisable that whereas you're making the oral one the written one also comes in play mm -hmm. yeah and before we went on this short break we were having a chit chat and you yeah. told me that there are different types of contracts yes. what are this um they can really we can have them we can have them in the broad in the broader we have come to understand them mm -hmm. um specifically relevant you can have a verbal contract uh, what you call an oral contract or a written contract that's one that is the primary place of operation mm -hmm. of the law now also under the contracts there are very many there are various forms of contracts for example when uh, i'm getting when you're being employed to here to this uh, station you'll be given an employment contract correct takes the form of a you know a written contract you get it so we may not mention all of them, but what we focus on which are relevant directly to the people, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think employment contracts will be the ones which will easily come into play here. We have the written ones, we have the verbal ones also. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when I was interacting with, um, I, I am in consultancy, mm. and um, when interacting with my lawyer, she mm. actually put to me that you know what um, there are bilateral contracts yes there are unilateral Lateral contracts, contracts mm. and all this are different yes and different um, 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 aspects come into play when mm. you're handling this too mm. so for the sake of the understanding of the viewer what is a bilateral and what is a unilateral contract now a bilateral contract is one which is made between two parties then a unilateral contract is one which is made with very many people okay or with the entire world for example the entire world yes uh and you know there are cases really under the law to expound on all that so when i come to you and you know i've bought this ipad that will be a bilateral contract between those two parties so it's just bound to two parties yes two parties that's mm -hmm. what the law will recognize mm -hmm. then uh unilateral you will find for example um we have what bushington here on the show he's making and whatever maybe it's bushington records or whatever his company is called with maybe artist say artist a artist b artist c now that would be a unilateral contract mm -hmm. yes and what is an amplified in law kind of contract what is amplified in law kind of contract um did you say amplified yes well, I, I, I would really have to go back and <laughs> have a understanding of that. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it that I'm pronouncing it wrong? Is it implied or implied? Implied. Oh, okay, implied. that's what I, you I told that's... me. Yes, implied. <laughs> yes. And, uh, implied contract. And implied. This is where, this is what you would really want to mean is that these are terms. It's a contract has terms. Now, there are terms which the law will imply mm -hmm. when you make the contract. Now, for example, when you, read, when you say definition of the law, uh, the ultimate implications that when you're making a contract, your intention was to be legally bound. Now the law will imply some of those things, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And also there, there, there are a couple of, either for example, if you're making an uh, employment contract, there are particular things that the law will imply. Mm -hmm. Or when you expound again, for example, where there are sale of, where there's a sale of goods, eh, where I'm coming to, you know, to purchase particular commodities, there are particular implications. For example you are importing iPads. I come and I say, I, am, I want to purchase, you know, iPads from you. Mm -hmm. Now, the implication, the law will imply, the implied term will be that, one, you are going to deliver on time. You get it. You're going to deliver a commodity which meets the standards which I expect it to perform. Mm -hmm. Now, all these are things that the law will imply. You get it. Okay. They may not be expressed because that, they, that's a very... That's another distinction mm -hmm. because under a contract, for example, an ex express terms, there are ones which are state yes. on paper and you know you are, they're very clear. But then those ones which are implied, the ones that will be imported in, the, the court will impute them on our minds or the law imputes them on our minds that we must be able to understand them and they will hold you on them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Every time I do business, mm. um, at times I'm told, you know what, um, you draft the contract yes. and then we'll approve it mm. or maybe take it through our own lawyer and then we approve it. Yeah. Is any kind of document that um, states an, a type of agreement mm. 
an enforceable contract by law. Mm. What are the characteristics of a good contract? A good contract. Now, again, that's where Section 10 of the Contracts Act comes in. And, you know, earlier on we gave the tenants of what a good contract actually is. One, there ought to be agreements. There ought to be a place in the mind of the parties which are making the contract that the, the cons the, what is going to be given as a form of payment is one that is agreeable to the parties. Mm -hmm. Number two, there ought to be free consent. I, ca I, I shouldn't come and I coerce you. For example, you go to a hospital. Now, I've, ha I, I've dealt with a particular cases where uh, a woman went to a hospital for birth and, you know, Ideally, the doctor had to ask for the consent before her uterus was removed. Now, the, the hospital died and removed the uterus. Now, you realize a doctor and a patient stand in a particular sort of relationship which gives a doctor some form of superiority mm -hmm. over the patient. Now, I could easily coerce you if I have a knowledge which surpasses what you understand. Or, say I am your lawyer, there are particular things I understand under the law that I could easily coerce you into. Yes. Now, there ought to be free consent. I shouldn't come and I push, I shouldn't come and intimidate you. The other things that there must be capacity to contract. Now, again, Section 11 of the Code of Circle Laws, I had to define what capacity is. Mm -hmm. One, you should be of age, 18 years. Now, that should not be misunderstood because there are other laws, for example, under the employment regulations, which talks about employing a person over six, about, you know, 16 years, a child over 16, yes. about 16 years. Now, capacity should be over 18 years, you should be of sound mind. Um, you should not be mentally incapacitated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And again, the law goes ahead to provide for situations whereby you have maybe mental relapses. And somebody today is on, tomorrow is off. Yes. Now they also goes ahead to cater for those things. Okay, but when mm. you go to the document itself, mm. what clauses are paramount in any basic contract? Mm. Um, is it you know um, the damages? Mm. Um, you said consideration is mm. important. Yes. What other clauses are very important, such that a, a viewer who is watching us today, when they skim through the mm. contract, they need to identify those, and if it's missing, mm. they need to highlight. All right. Um, could, could I just finish just this other, okay. uh, now the other, you. briefly, mm -hmm. the other thing, the other tenants of a good contract, they ought to be consideration. Okay. Um, for example, let me make it very basic, uh, you could, money that you've paid, because you're not going to come and you say there was a contract when there was no form of consideration. Correct. The other thing is that it should be the lawful object, as we said earlier, you can't make a contract to import cocaine. Yes. That would be legal. And finally, the intention should be for you to be legally bound. Now. Let's go into what a person should look out for when they're making a contract, when they're having any sort of contract. Yes. Now, because contracts vary from party to party, from situation to situation, the basic ones we have to look at, one, they are all to be, the parties must be clear. Mm. When I come and I make a contract with you, Mala, there should be very clear that a contract between Simon and Mala, that should be extremely clear. Because in case of a breach of a contract, then you must know who are the parties. An outside party is not simply going to come in and, you know, and try to hmm. come into the contract. Correct. There should be the dates of when you make this particular contract because that is extremely very important. Why is it important under the law? Because you see, contracts have a particular time when they can be enforced. When a breach happens, the law gives what they call a limitation, okay. especially law contracts under what they call civil law. Now, there are limitations for civil law under what time an action can be brought. Um, you should also look out again, as we said, for the consideration what is being paid, what is being paid. You should be able to look out for what particular item or what particular service are you looking out for. Uh -huh. For example, Bushington is dealing with musicians. The service would be one of performances, music performances. Now that has, that has to be understood clearly. Mm -hmm. I am maybe buying again a commodity from you. The commodity must be very clear what I am purchasing. You must be able to look out again the contract provides for particular rights of the individuals. Mm -hmm. The person who is making, the two parties who are making the contracts, they should, you should look out for what are your rights.
Now again, that's where a lawyer comes in. There are rights which are there, which can be expressly stated. However, there are also particular obligations which are, can be imputed to you by law, implied on you by law, mm -hmm. that you must be able to understand. Also, other important clauses that ought to be, you know, ought to be looked out for enforcement of the contract. How is the contract going to be enforced? At what time? Like the rules and regulations. The, um, what you'd call okay, rules and regulations. How, yes. how uh, for example, um, again, I'll use the basic examples. Um, Bushington makes uh, a contract with maybe Chameleon. How is that contract going to be enforced? Are you going to be dealing with the producer of Chameleon? At what stage is that enforcement going to be done? When is it considered that actually the contract has been enforced and acted upon? Mm -hmm. Is it when it has been made or when I come and I execute my obligation mm -hmm. under mm -hmm. the contract? You must also be able to look out for what happens when there is a breach of contract. So termination? Um, that's also now another part. Eh? At what stage can the termination again happen? Again, many times contracts, ideally a good contract, should be able to provide that there should be consent, there should be notice, I must notify you that, you know, I am going to terminate this contract. Now, again, it depends on the contract. For example, if you are an employee of NTV, the NTV has a right, for example, to summarily terminate you. So it can do a summary termination. Correct. Okay, or summary dismissal, mm -hmm. so to say. So that contract can be terminated. Then, again, you should be able to look out for what every party is doing in a contract. What am I supposed to do? That must be extremely clear. So which, what each party is bringing to the table? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And let me ask you a question. Mm. You talked about breach and also termination, yes. how to exit a contract. Mm. In the event that you sign a contract, because mm. it happens a lot, mm -hmm. where you do a contract, mm. a good contract yeah. at that, and then it's actually, you know what, um, something that you both agreed, so mm. there's that. Um, and then after, for example, if I come to you and I say, you know what, um, I need your services, mm. then you actually deliver your services, mm. but I do not pay you as we had agreed, and mm. it's stipulated in the contract. Yes. So if I don't pay you as agreed, can I? Can you take that basic contract to a lawyer and then file a case against me if mm. that contract was not notarized by a lawyer initially? Mm. Does mm. a contract have to be notarized by a lawyer for it to be enforceable by law, mm. to, for it to actually have power once it's taken up for a case? Um, good practice would require, again, that you notarize. Okay. Now, again, depends on the magnitude of the contract being made. So notarization could not be strictly one that the law would say, now it was a notarized, so that, you know, that will not So be. actually a contract that is not notarized can actually stand a case? For example, a verbal contract, an yes. oral contract, how is it going to be notarized by a lawyer? A written contract. It. A written contract, good practice require you to notarize it. Okay. Um, if it's not notarized, do I stand a case? Yes, okay. you do stand a case, mm -hmm. because you see, the courts of law are going to look at the basic tenets of what made this particular contract. Have they, are they existent? Okay. You get it. And then the law will go ahead to act on that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to pick up what exactly the line of, the, the line of thought was. Uh, just help me recap the question again. It was still on notarization. Mm -hmm. Does, if, if both parties or one party that does not, you know, um, offer mm. or you know, um, execute as mm. agreed, yes. and so the contract and exactly, mm. and the contract was not notarized mm. in the first place, mm. does it stand a case? Mm. Um, so, and you've answered that yeah, it I've actually stands that. a case. Now, let's go now to the other part: mm -hmm. breach and then termination. Yes. Now, obviously, the law provides for various ways in which a contract can be breached. For example, you can make a a clause in the contract that you see the moment you don't perform on my show when we contracted and I paid you mm -hmm. then you've breached the contract then also uh, a contract may be breached by frustration for example <laughs> you're supposed to be having a show in this particular place yes okay mm -hmm. and maybe so you, uh, maybe you paid me to come and uh, this, this room gets on fire you get it now yes. the contract will then be it will be really frustrated so it cannot take off mm. end of the day you're not going to come and tell me that you see because the place where you're going to have to be executed has has really you know been frustrated mm -hmm. yeah 
Okay. Um, the other thing is, for example, now we get into an agreement, we sign a contract, and all this is done, and and then you do not actually um, honor your bit of the bargain. Mm -hmm. What steps should I take mm -hmm. to actually take it up with the law? Mm -hmm. Because many a times um, we just feel like, okay, fine, you didn't execute, so it's frustration, mm -hmm. but we fear to take it up with the law, mm -hmm. like filing a case and stuff like that. What are the procedures? Is it expensive, number one? Mm -hmm. If it's not expensive, um, what What's the first step to actually filing a case, a case against um, the other party? Um, the most, the, the, the very primary place, one, understanding what is in the contract. Number two, what the viewers must understand, that when a contract is breached, you as a party, again, assume the contract has been breached, you have rights. Okay. that you can enforce against that one who has breached the contract. Now, the law provides for what we call remedies. Remedies, one, the most important thing, taking up court action to enforce the contract. Now, so when you go to court, when you file a case, that's also another procedure you will go through. When you file a case, one, the court can grant you, you can ask for compensation for the contract that was breached. So the process of filing the case, do mm -hmm. I just go to any court and I say, you know what, I have this case I want to file against X person mm -hmm. or... Um, do I now sort out for a lawyer so the process can be easy? Mm. And is it expensive? Um, ideal What's the best for a common person out there? For a common person, now we say again what we are dealing with here, there are, very, there are various forms of contract that are yes. uh -huh. Now, for example, just a quick one. You are having an employment um you're having an employment contract yes. going on, mm -hmm. and the contract has been breached. Ideally, the law provides for a mechanism of you going to a labor officer ah. at least within three months. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. to report that actually the contract was you know, uh, was not honored. Then also, you can take up civil action now that will require you to involve a lawyer ideally to help you prepare the court documents, understand the process of the courts of law, how you approach the courts of law, what necessary documents do you need, mm -hmm. and um. That's, that's again what we have to look at. Mm -hmm. And again, what happens is that when that contract has been breached, when you go to court, you'll be given particular remedies mm. when it has been breached. Mm -hmm. For example, the court can order that you be compensated. Number two is what we call specific performance. You can ask for court for an order of specific performance. That will mean that, for example, you had to deliver iPads. You didn't deliver the iPads. The court will come and say, will give me an order will give you an order to enforce on you to deliver those iPads. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, you're dealing with an artist. He didn't show up. You go to court, and they can order that artist to come and perform. Now, should you dishonor court, then you'll be jailed up. Yes. Then other things, you know, um, damages, you know, you can ask for damages, which could again be what you could call specific mm -hmm. uh, or there could be general damages mm -hmm. now specific damages there must be they must be um clearly proven mm -hmm. under the law mm -hmm. that uh for example an ipad had to cost me this much yes and because you frustrated my contract i've lost this amount of money then that would be what you, you have to prove those specific damages. Okay, so those are the processes mm. for yes. the different kind of contracts that you get into. Mm. And is it expensive or affordable, just in a nutshell? Because um, many people actually shy away from filing cases because they think man is going to be straining financially. Is yes. it true? Um, no, it's, it's not really true because there are various ways. Number one, you could opt to go for a lawyer, mm. a private lawyer, you know, to help That you. would be expensive. That not, you know, not really, depending on what... Uh, what are the consideration in the contract is. Yes. Eh? Uh, then also, you could also, there are situations where the law provides for, uh, let me say what, the, what, for example, the country has opted has put in place various mechanisms where you go maybe to NGOs which provide, if a person is really not so rich, you could approach an NGO or organizations which can provide these services at a reasonable price. Okay. Because you see, again, the law will hold lawyers accountable mm -hmm. for doing work without being paid. Yes. That is an offense for us ah, lawyers. Yes, I hear you. Mm -hmm. And when you're getting a lawyer to help, because you say that's an option as well, yes. should I, for example, you're a lawyer, mm -hmm. if I have a case and I need you to help me out, mm -hmm. should I sign a contract with you? 
It's important. It's important. Actually, well. that is the primary <laughs> training of a lawyer. When you come to me, okay, I first make with you a particular argument. Yes, and I make it clear. Okay, yes. so in case you actually breach, I can sue you as a lawyer. Yes, there are options. You can go to law council, <laughs> and you take that particular. Lawyer okay, again. as we bring this to a close, yes. Why should the viewers actually read a contract? sentence by sentence and mm. understand and if they don't understand why should they bother themselves to actually go and consult for someone else to help them you know comprehend what the contract is what is the importance of understanding a contract before you put pen to paper one in a nutshell for you to know your rights and obligations for you to know what remedies will have in case the contract has been breached for you to have a firm understanding of what the contract actually Entail. is all about but also for the Ugandans to understand that at this stage in life, we ought to be much more serious with the work that we are doing. Because you see, various contracts vary. You know, somebody mentioned that, I think it was the, the president who said that actually, you go on a computer and they put four terms and four you simply yes, sign. Yes, yes. Various things can arise from that. So you ought to understand what your rights are, what your duties are, your obligations are, and what when a contract has been breached, what remedies will you have? Okay. Thank you so much for coming on the show. That was quite helpful. Yeah. In case you're still watching us and you still have questions for the lawyer, please keep the hashtag going. The hashtag is Morning at NTV. Get those questions coming and we'll pose them to him. Remember, a contract is there to benefit you and also the other party. You have a right. So make sure before you put pen to paper, read through. If you do not understand, consult before you put pen to paper. After this break, we'll be having Take Note. Stay tuned. Everything go be real. With pets, everything go be real. A big promotion. No gari mu get to never give up. Tangula. A big promotion. I never give up. Tangula. So me so me so never give up. Tangula. With Pepsi today. Simply buy a 300 milliliter glass bottle of Pepsi, Mirinda, or Mountain Dew. Check under the gold cross.